Welcome to the Musical Movements podcast and in this podcast I'm sitting with DJ Shrey. What's good everyone? Welcome to the pod. The pod, oh yeah, pod and video cast. Video cast. So yeah, exactly. Today, exactly. Before, before we dive into it, um, I've, we've convinced, convinced Shrey to come over to South London to Croydon, which was yeah. really hard to do. Yeah. So yeah, welcome oh, to Croydon. Bro, in the last episode you said we brought the whole team down. It's it was, actually just it was, me. It was you, yeah. So no, you no, made nobody me travel from northwest to south. But you loved the drive, didn't you? Like, you I came it. for the food, to be honest. <laughs> Everything's closed today, man. It's a, so. well, we're, yeah, okay. It is, it's, we're going to struggle with food afterwards. But, um, no, it's good to be down here. Um, this place is wicked, Yeah. by the way. Yeah, I didn't know this stuff about the record store and, and all that before I got here. So, really cool venue, man. If you're uh, if you're around, come check it out or uh, do your thing. They do yeah. private parties here as well. That's, right? so. that's it. It's called The Venue. The Venue. But, but before that, it used to be called Beano's. I used to always refer to it as Beano's. Mm-hmm. And even as a school kid, I used to come down here. I didn't really buy anything, but I used to... Dig through the crates of, of records, listen to them, and it's really cool. Actually, three different floors, um, and it's a Victorian building as well. So, uh, see, I wish I was born in that era where you could go and buy records. I just wasn't, and I feel like so. I grew up on CDs basically, um, and I wish I had the records because you know, like they just look, they just look cooler. Yeah. And then now it's all on the in the air. <laughs> basically, yeah. music is everywhere. Well, you, you, can't, you can't see out the vision, but there's. Um, there's records scattered everywhere when you walk around the venue, so um, yeah, that's, that's, pretty cool, man. that's pretty cool. But yeah, today's podcast is going yeah. to be about seating plans, um, where to sit people, yes. how to sit people, do they sit or stand? So um, yeah, yeah, it's a strange one. Um, but I think seating plans is, 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 a, is an important thing to discuss because I, I think it really, really impacts the way the night goes. So like, if you've got the right people in the right places, it will work. So... I'm just going to go straight to it. My opinion is um, you want the close cousin near to the dance floor and then you want the elderly guests a bit further out and then the ones outside you can have the mates. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So or near the bar or whatever, you know, that's where you want the mates. So that's what I would do. To be fair, Shrey, I've never had, never really thought about it until I planned my own wedding. <laughs> so um, that's when I started to give it much more thought and I was like, okay, exactly what you said. So close family and friends you want around your your table um closer to the dance floor because yeah. they're the ones you're going to drag up first after yeah, the first yeah, dance. yeah exactly yeah friends a bit further away because they don't mind sitting on the further table yeah. so it's happy that they're invited to your wedding and yeah they're not <laughs> that important are they on the day <laughs> it's all about the aunties and uncles of that but i would never say that yeah. to them like, obviously yeah, I mean, they're, they're really important <laughs> love you <laughs> but yeah so, it, it's yeah. true because you know uh i did i done a wedding last week um in wokefield and the, so there was there's a stage for a live band. It's a really, really nice wedding. It's beautiful. The whole thing was sick from start to finish. And um, the only thing that was the only negative, literally, for the whole thing was that in front of the stage, like if you took the, if you're on the stage and look at the two right, the right top corner, left top corner, there was two tables there. And both of them were elderly guests. And that's where the speakers were pointing out. And so they, were a bit like, can you turn it down? Like, it's too loud. And they got upset with the entrance. It's like, it's too loud and stuff. So that was another thing that I think, you know, you need to think about who's sitting next to the DJ as well. Because you don't want, like, old people sitting next to the, or young children sitting next to the DJs because the speakers, essentially, as much as we give it the surround sound, they are there. So that's where it's going to be the loudest. And then, obviously, the kids running around with the lights and stuff, that could be another hazard. So I'd say keep the kids away from the DJs. And keep the youngsters as close to the front as possible, and then the mates can be. So, what's the what's probably the the worst setup that you can think of? What, worst, what, worst, yeah. What would be your your worst setup? You've got anyone with any sort of life in them, like all the fun people in a back corner, opposite end of the bar. That would be the worst thing. Okay. That would be the worst thing because you're just like you're because you know even during the mains and and stuff, you're playing a bit of background, and you want to see people nodding their head and like enjoying it. Um, but then again, to be fair, you don't want to offend your elderly aunties and uncles who, you know, obviously you've, you've grown up with them and then you're like, oh, okay, cool, you're sitting like quite near the back. That's also quite rude. So it's, you need to have a balance. But yeah. it's, it's tricky. It's not easy. You know, you're, you're planning your, you know, you've probably done your seating plan by now. Yeah. Was it yeah. tricky? I've, I've got you two as a back, bro. But no, no, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> I'll be at the bar, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> but... Um, for me personally, the, the worst place you could put the top table, um, so forward, forward thinking a bit more, yeah. is on the stage where you're performing. Um, I've had that a few times and I've had a screen 
behind. So that's probably the worst setup. You've got a screen behind your DJ booth and then you've got a top table blocking that screen. Oh, I see. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then people that are doing speeches, they're, they're looking at the screen and the bride and groom have got the back face to the screen, the screen and they're, yeah. they're having to turn around and do all that kind of business. Um, but also the that's music, point they the won't screen, really, yeah. the speakers are kind of centered to the crowd and not to the top table, which is on the stage with you for some reason. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably one of the worst places you can put the top yeah, table. Yeah, that's an interesting one. But I don't, I don't know about head tables generally. I don't really get it. Like, I understand obviously who sits on there. Well, who sits on there? Who, is that like, what do you think? Who, who should sit on the head table <laughs> so, if there is one? I don't believe there should even yeah. be one. But if there is one, who's on it? So I've had a situation where it's just bride and groom on their own. <laughs> I've done but, that. But that that's that's quite awkward. <laughs> they're, I was thinking they're sitting next to each other. Yeah. As well, so you can't really talk. Like it's, it's a bit weird. So you're, you're both facing this. I don't, I don't get it, man. And the thing is, you never really by yourself because people keep walking up anyway. Yeah. And I find that you tend to move around anyway. Like, oh, that's it. So, exactly, yeah. And so, I feel bad for the bride and groom because everyone comes over when they're eating. So, like, they never get their <laughs> they never get their meal done ever because you've got, like, 150, 200 people all at once coming over to say hello and congratulations and you're trying to eat. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that because one time I did kind of keep an eye. I was just gazing around the room mm. when I'm playing. When you play background music, you tend to pick up people's vibes and stuff. Yeah. Um, whilst they're eating and I was looking at the bride and groom and, and the, the poor bride and groom they were touching the plate putting the fork in and putting it to their mouth and somebody will walk around <laughs> and they had to put the fork back down so by the end of it I looked at it and, and I had to announce the, the the first round of speeches at that point but their plate was pretty much untouched like yeah, the, the fork was still in the banu still got that one paneer cube on there yeah it was on the, the, the that one cube the was on the <laughs> I felt so bad for them I was like this is well I think that's part and parcel of you know, it's your wedding. You're going to be on the cameras and all that all day, yeah. basically. And I think regardless of where you sit, you're going to have that issue that people are going. Well, it's not an issue, but people are going yeah. to come round to you. Um, but but top tables, should you have them? That's that's the big question. Would you would you have them at your own wedding? Look, I, I I I get why people have them. Um, and you know, from our experience in weddings, it's usually bride and groom, siblings, and then do you, uh, sorry parents siblings, and then do you put the siblings partners? If they're married, or it's it's a difficult one because um it depends on the capacity of the table and and how long should you have the table and like, then what if one side's longer than the other I said, it looks weird should you have like 13, 14 people on the head table and is that right to do that so um yeah because you could have like a bride and groom their parent let's say one of the parents is no longer with us and then you've got the the siblings and let's say you got like no siblings on one side and then you've got like three siblings on the other side and they're all married then how does it do you know what I mean yeah it will, I think it, it depends I think you've got to weigh up the, the pros and cons of how much space you've got as well so if you've got, you got a small venue you don't really, really want, want, want to be cramming on yeah. all the family members onto the small table and um, even the formality aspect, aspect of it like is it a formality having a head table um, is it merely well, a formality it's, it's a, it's, I suppose it's a tradition right yeah. um, in in I suppose all nationalities, I guess, from what I know. Um, my advice would be scrap it and put the bar there instead. It's a good shout. So I done that that wedding in Wakefield I was talking about earlier. They had so we had DJ booth on top of a stage where a live band was um, before we started. Then they had a dance floor, cake obviously, and then they had a bar. So even if you're getting a drink, you're on the dance floor. If you're getting shots, you're on the dance floor. Even if you're getting water, you're on the dance floor, and it was just epic. We really, could have gone on for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, really important topic you're talking about there, having the bar in the same room as your as your, as your dance floor because it's so important. But before we touch on that, um, even even my favorite, my personal favorite setup is having the head table directly in front of you because I can talk to them. So okay. when I'm miking and stuff, makes sense. I'm, I'm addressing them in front of me. Yeah. And left and right, you've got tables, which is brilliant. So you're talking to your left, talking to your right, yeah. and you got in the middle. Yeah. So um, I personally love having bride and groom in front but then the question is where do you put the bar because you've got that yeah. there and then you've got tables on either side and then you might have the bar at one end which means those people have to walk all the way across to get to the bar on that side that's another big problem if the bar's on one end you're right people do have to go across yeah i say bar just the number one rule as close to dance floor as possible that's it like it, obviously if it can't be where the head table usually is put it somewhere nearby or you know a lot of venues have their own bar built in in certain places or 
can even be in the, in the next room, which is a disaster for us. We hate that, of course. But um, you don't have to use that bar. So, if, like, if you're listening and watching, you don't have to use the, the bar that is built into the venue. You can make your own bar in the room if you have the space and, 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 and want to. So I think have the... Because we've done weddings where, and, and you know, this is no, no offence to anyone that hasn't done this, but usually it's an open bar. Um, and then I've done weddings where it's been a paid bar and the bar's in another room. And it's like, that's really tricky for us to, because people might be a bit less willing to drink as much. And then also it's in another room. So people congregate in another room and then we're struggling to keep people on the dance floor. And then the, when the bride and groom leave the dance floor, then you're in trouble. Cause, that's, you know. that's a very interesting point because I tend to tell my bride and grooms that um, for the first half an hour to 40 minutes, please don't leave the dance floor because if you move mm. off the dance floor, people will follow you like a magnet. Um, so it's, a really, it's really crucial for them to stay on the dance floor for the first, at that's least for true. the first opening 40 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, because that, that moment, everybody's going to follow you around. Yeah, absolutely. If you go to the bar, everybody else will go to the bar and then dragging people back on again. That's why the bar should be where the head table is. Or on the dance floor, in the middle. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> but like, I think for sure, um, seating plans is, is a really tricky one. But once you've got the the main bits. So how, how did you do it? What did you? How, what was your process? So my seating plan, um, same as what you said, really. I put close family closer together to the dance floor. Close family as in, does as it matter age-wise? or? It does, yeah. It does okay. matter because... Um, Elderly people, you want to put a bit further away from the speakers. Yeah. Because the same issue that you said, yeah, there was, yeah. we've always had the problem where they sort of do this little signal thing. Yeah, they're the, like, yeah, too loud. <laughs> yeah, it's too loud. So, um, so to prevent that, that issue, I'd rather have them away from it. And then um, a bit closer, closer to the speakers, you'll have uncles, aunts that are okay with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, they haven't got the little cool kids, ones. maybe. Yeah, the cool people <laughs> by the speakers. Um, and then a bit further away, you've got the friends and then in between. Um, so friends are going to be a bit more on the outskirts. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably my, my solution to it. And I think most people tend to go around that, but do not put elderly people or kids by the speakers. Yeah. That's, um, that's do you know what I've noticed? That, like, you know, sometimes obviously we've got like, let's say we've clients booked in six lights, with moving heads. So we obviously some are up high on trussing, some are on the floor. I'm seeing kids go over and put their hand... And I'm like, you're, please, like, it's so scary. Like, you're literally going to burn your hand. Like, don't. And then they look into it and you're just like, oh, my God, please. You know what comes to mind when scary. I see that? When I see that, I think of that face palm emoji where you just, you're like. Yeah, you're just please. like, oh, my God, please. And then, then you're thinking of calling. You don't want to call the parent out. But then eventually you have to say, whoever's kid this is, can you claim, claim your child, please? Because yeah. <laughs> really. We turn the light off. If there's yeah. kids, like, we turn those, the, the, usually two on the on the floor, on the stage or whatever. Yeah. We just turn them off or, or yeah. lower them or whatever. Um, Speaking of which, have you had a situation where the kids have come on, um, <laughs> or they've been close to coming on during the dance, first dance, or just before the entrance, and they kind of hijack the dance floor, and yeah. the parents are chilling in the corner or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah they just chill. Especially so, in speeches as well. They do yeah. that as well. Like, like, you know, say a little kid's dad is giving a speech, like one of the best men or whatever. And then the kid runs on and he steals the show and the speech is ruined. <laughs> I've had that a couple of times. I've never had it before an entrance though. Um, but yeah, have, have, you, have you had that? So I've had that during the speech, like you said, and then they've got to, they've got to balance the microphone with the, with the kid. And, and the speech and, is I, there and the drink's there and it's all a bit of a mess. And sometimes they don't even know who the kid is. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're picking up this kid, random kid. But if you're the, if you're the parent, yeah. surely you're going to be like, oh, I better go and get, you know. Yeah, but I've seen some parents where like, they're like, should I get up? Should I not? There's a speech going on. Should I? And they're I think it's cool, man. Look, a speech yeah. going on. Your kids run on. Like it's, yeah. like, it's it's normal. Like it's fine. Just go and get your kid. People will make laugh. You know, be a bit of a bit of a joke and that. Take the kid. Take him. Put him in an Uber. Send him home. <laughs> get rid of him. <laughs> but speaking about kids, um, the bit that scares me the most and gives me the most anxiety is when you got the cake that's perfectly situated oh, in the middle. Mate, honestly, the, and the, yeah, and then you got you got. It's not even kids. It's adults too. <laughs> It's not just come really close and take pictures. I'm like, yeah. don't walk too close to it. Like, like, I've had a situation. Some dance floors are a bit, you know. Yeah, I've had a situation straight when um, the cake was top heavy. So oh, no. when they made, you can, yeah, you and it was top heavy. When they went to cut the cake, um, they dug the knife in, and the whole thing just toppled over. And the photographer, he snapped, snapped away, and um, you could see him trying to catch the cake. I've, and this went viral. This picture, I think, I've maybe, just, maybe I've it seen did. it. 
That was the wedding that I did. Maybe it was a red cake or something. I, I think I remember seeing this. Yeah, Maybe tried, you sent it or I don't know, something. Yeah, the poor bride and groom tried to catch the cake and the bride was just in shock. She was like, and the groom was like, what kind trying of to do like a goal, was it goalkeeper on, dive. Was it on their clothes? <laughs> nah, luckily yeah, it, it toppled lucky. to the side, but even then it was top heavy. And, and um, What would you do if on your wedding, yeah, yeah. whenever it is, whenever this podcast comes out and stuff, but when you cut your cake, are you doing a cake? Yeah. Okay, because I know you weren't too fond of the entrance. Yeah, so I'm not. It's strange being a DJ, and um, we're all a centre of attention. But personally, I would rather just flow into the venue and start a party, and that's it. We're good to go. You know, um, I'm not. I'm not too keen on entrances and all the formality stuff. Interesting. So um, it's really strange. I wasn't too keen on it, but in the end, we have got an entrance. <laughs> we have got <laughs> After an entrance. all of that, you got so an entrance. I had to compromise a little bit, and and um, actually, I've made a custom entrance, which I'm going to send to you at some oh, yeah, point. Yeah. So. There's about four or five um, DJs at the reception. Thankfully, I've got the MM team there. So, yeah. Doing if, it for free, if you want to book four or five of us, then that's, that's the way to go. I'm actually so, looking forward to it. It'll be good fun. Yeah. It's the first time we've been out. Is that what bit? I'm, he hasn't even told me what I'm doing. Am I doing that, that bit? You are DJing. Yeah, so oh, I'm DJing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking, no, are we sick? It's only a week away, so yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, but um, it's not not it's not often one of us gets married. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll be good fun. It's true. It's true. I'm looking forward to having you guys there. But um, yeah, I didn't I didn't personally want an entrance, but I don't mind it. It's but there. is that just because you don't want the limelight thing? Or yeah, I just want to. I just want. Um, I, I think too much has been made up of the entrances, and in the end, you kind of miss the drinks reception too. Yeah. That's true. So um, I'm gonna miss my own drinks reception, which I wanna I wanna be there for. I wanna spend as much time as possible with the guests because everyone there, yeah. Especially in the UK, you have limited time. You've got six maybe seven hours if you're lucky off the wedding reception yeah now you di- divide that up completely it's not much time you know so um if you're missing about two hours off or one hour off, off that six seven hours with your guests true it adds up you know and then you miss another half an hour trying to get people seated and stuff yeah and true. then you got your entrance um that was my thought behind it but um makes sense though so you're gonna just flow in i was gonna or what you were <laughs> yeah and so what was your plan with the cake then the cake was just just announcement. The cake, just quick yeah. announcement. Quick announcement. Cut the cake. Even speeches. Like um, I know most people do speeches, and, and it's great. Like some people are good at doing speeches. Some. Can we try something at your wedding? Yeah. You know the glass when they people tap the glass. Yeah. Can we just try that instead of announcing? Do you like that? See if it works. But, but knowing my luck, I'll probably tap it a bit too hard. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what Champagne I don't. Champagne everywhere. <laughs> that's it. That's what I don't want to happen. Oh my god. Um, but but yeah. I'm not too keen on speeches myself personally, but it's great when people do them correctly. <laughs> well, then but, that's, you know, when you get things like, so you've got your entrance and your cake and your speeches and then you get people doing dances and then it, that whole thing, and we, 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 we've done an episode on, on like itinerary. This is just eating into partying time. So yes, it's great entertainment, you know, for the best man and the bridesmaids and the siblings and all these youngsters to do funny stories about right it's great it's so much fun and it's great to listen to as well as djs but you're really literally eating into so much time on the dance floor have you had a situation where it's cut so deeply in that you've only had like say half an hour of dancing twice twice uh once was um northbrook park really lovely venue if no one's seen it awesome venue um but uh i think that venue i think you close at 11 there or 11 30 but what happened was um, they'd left two hours to dance, which was great. Uh, I think the entrance was delayed. Um, I think it was a bridal issue with outfits or something. Uh, and then after that, uh, the starters got delayed, and the main the food was delayed. And then the father of the groom was speaking, and he just said, oh, "I'm just going to keep this short." He had like seven pages. I swear to God, it was nearly about 25 minutes. Yeah, and that was like as long as this podcast, and that's long. Like, how can you talk for that long? And everyone was like looking at me, and I was like, what? "You can't, you what? can't." Yeah. But do you know what I find the most awkward with speeches? I don't know if you find the same thing. It's the end of the speech. When is the end of the speech? Because oh, some people they, they'll talk, and then they'll it it'll, it'll, it'll sound like they're stopping and they're ending. And you try to pick up your microphone and say, "Put your." And then they carry on talking yeah, about it again. Yeah. And, and you just don't know. So what I, what, I, what I started to do is I've started to fade in the music, the outro music. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I give them an intro music, an outro music. Um, so the outro music will be essentially when they walk away. So I'll start fading that back in and then I'll announce after. Because there was a time when I announced it and they carried on talking. I was like, okay. 
Do you know what? That's, that's true. Because traditionally, or, or you know, um, usually, the, the thing is that at the end of the speech, they say, give up the bride and groom, cheers. And then you think, okay, that's done. Then sometimes they do an, like an extra bit and you're like, oh, I was not expecting that. And then you look a bit silly. Yeah, exactly. Fading the music. I've done that a lot, to be fair. Like, because sometimes people just say thank you and people clap. So you put the music back on and you're like, great. And then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And they keep talking. And you're like, oh. So sometimes I just jump on it as a joke. Like, oh, mate, I thought you were finished, mate. Sorry. <laughs> and then it's sort of, you get over it. But it was a bit of a strange one. You, you might have touched on this previously, but speeches. Okay. I was on the topic of speeches anyway. But yeah. um, microphones. Now, oh have you God. had the situation where they start off there? Which you, we always suggest that you put it to the, to the chin um, or around the chin anyway. And then they start going further down. And sometimes they start waving it around yeah. like this. We're going to do a whole podcast on, on speeches. But this is so true. No, literally, we could do like five podcasts on speeches, honestly. This is so true. Like, and then some people have paper or they're reading off their phone. And then, they got the, and then they're articulating with their hands. And it's like, it sounds like it's like, it's like what, what are you saying? Like, stay, keep them. And I always say, I, if I can, I'll go up to whoever's speaking before I give them the mic. Um, like during the mains or whatever, I'll give them the, their mic that's ready. I have mine in the, in the booth. And I'll say, look, I know it sounds really stupid, but please talk into the mic. And they're like, oh, yeah, obviously. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> Speech comes and they're like talking like this. And I'm like, no, talk into the mic. And you can't say anything when, when they've started. It's really hard. And then you're trying to turn it up. And then people are at the back, they're saying, can't hear. And I'm like, yeah, we're nearly on full volume. And then we get feedback. And then when they do bring it back, it's like, oh, my God. Do you know what I'll start doing in that situation? I'll start looking at the photographer because they're directly in front of these people and I kind of catch the eye contact and I go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they tell them. <laughs> yeah, and then they sort of do the same thing and then they sometimes hopefully realise that they've got to lift the microphone a little bit. Yeah, so, the, the other option is you get lapel mics. Yeah, that's but a good shout. They, but then you've got to clip it, unclip it. You've got to so. clip it and also if it's a lady and they've got hair and outfits and especially Indian outfits, you know, you've got the blouse, um, not the blouse, it's called the, the shawl and stuff yeah. and it gets in the way and you get a bit of a scratchy sound. But the, apart from that, I think the pearl might, might be the way forward. Yeah. Because especially for blokes, like if you ping it here, you're, you're good. I'm a huge fan of the headside microphones, you know, you just come round over here and you just, you feel like, like you're a, singing, but you're not really singing. You also look like a personal trainer, like doing a spin class. Yeah. Or, or a priest. <laughs> or a priest, yeah. So, to be fair, yeah. priests have got better, I think. They've got much better at using these mics. They, yeah. they were really bad, like, five, ten years ago. Like, they had, like, it was, they couldn't, they, they didn't know how to turn it off and on. And just, everything's getting in the way. And then they're, they're, they're forgetting that it's on. And they're saying stuff like, oh, pass me that coconut over there. And you're like, you're, you're announcing this to, like, a thousand people. <laughs> like I've got to say, you've got to love priests. Um, and, right. and <laughs> I mean. You work quite closely with yeah. a lot of them, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it can be comical sometimes, what. The, the habits and stuff but um i think a lot of them know that this is the situation yeah. this is the drill the one thing um that i always say to them is that when you turn a microphone on give it a couple of seconds and then it's turned on yeah if you start talking straight away it's not going to work um so over time they've, they've got better at realizing that i think and, and yeah i mean it's a host they're a host aren't they so they're hosting the wedding ceremony yeah. so it's really important that they 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 know these things yeah, I mean, some priests like the handheld thing. Some priests like the, the headset one. Um, to be honest, if the headset mic looked nicer, I would say use it for speech. It's just because it's so, it's, it's black, firstly, right? Which is, it, it, you can see it, obviously. Yeah. And it's just, it just looks ugly on someone's face. So maybe we need to look at some better looking ones. Make it blingified and stuff. Yeah. Cust customize you know those really headset. thin ones that you see some football commentators use? That they, they're really thin. And sometimes they even tape it down to their face. Which I'm not saying we should do that, but like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're they're quite good. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, that, maybe you should tape it because that way they won't they won't start picking it away and stuff. Can so. you imagine taping a microphone to someone's face? Literally, <laughs> God. But I think with speeches, um, yeah. you know, like I said, we're gonna do a whole episode on them, on 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 them. But I feel like, firstly, like you you hear the same things over and over again. So if you're doing a speech, come up with something new. Keep it short and just like be happy and positive, and then that's it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to spend twenty minutes talking about when you first met the bride or when you first met the groom, unless it's the groom giving his, the story or or the best man giving the story of the 
you don't need to tell them your life story with the bride or the groom. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah. I'm not going to go on stage at yours and say, I first met Vish when I was this old. And, you know, I don't think that's relevant. No. no just keep it people, short. Yeah. People tend to lose interest. Yeah, you could be like, oh, we met at school and, you know, we've been friends. Here's a couple of funny stories, whatever. Bam. Yeah. Five, ten minutes. I t- how long do you give people to do their speech? Normally, I say don't do them. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah. if, they, if they have to do the speech, yeah, I'll say to them five minutes, ten minutes tops. Um, I'm, I'm always against presentations. I don't like presentations because when you start doing the PowerPoint presentations as if they were in school or something, um, it will go on a lot longer. Sometimes there might be technicalities or there might be issues. I'm always against it because it, that cuts into the time. And yeah. I've done so many events, countless amounts of events. And, and at these events, they um, run over the time. Yeah, because they change between slides, they forget what they're saying, and then they explain one slide too much. And, and knowing our luck, that we get sent the PowerPoint on the day. Yeah, and USB. Then it's, yeah, USB or, or like ten minutes before. Oh, we got a USB, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> so yes, but we we usually yeah. do accommodate, but yeah. I always ask for everything a week before. Yeah, I say if it's I I say to them like I need it seven days before, yeah. but you know if they're a couple of days later. It's and, yeah. and also, what's your take on performances at receptions, um, dance performances, be it a nephew, niece, cousin? Can I be honest? Yeah. Unless you're really, really good, or it's a comical one and you're really, really bad, don't bother. <laughs> Basically. So, like, if you've got all the cousins who have two left feet doing a dance and they do, like, the funny ones, like Gangnam Style and all that, or whatever it might be, right, that are actually funny, yeah, great. Or if you've got a cousin who's extremely talented and she's a very good dancer or something, go for it. Otherwise, just sack it off. Yeah. Just leave it. I mean, I kind of suggest the same sort of thing. I always say to them that do it at the Sangeet party or the Mendy party. Yeah. At the reception, you're so time restrained that you want to have maximum time on the dance floor or with with, yeah. with the people that are there with you. Well, I've even suggested people do speeches in other, uh, other events. Yeah. So, like, do... You know, if you can't get all your siblings to speak on the reception, do it in the in the Mendy nights or some heat night, or whatever. Do it in your own house. Yeah, or yeah, do it on WhatsApp. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thanks for being my big sis or something. You know, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a good. Um, I mean, a good idea to to do it separately because that time it flies by. I like, can't I can't stress that enough. Like yeah. that the moment you enter, it's pretty much a blur. So the time it finishes, that six yeah, yeah. hours flies quicker than anything else. Honestly, I, you're so right. Like, doing a plank. Takes ages. Like one minute will go so slowly <laughs> yeah. doing a plank, but six hours at a wedding reception. Flies. Can you do a one minute plank. Just about. That's that's pretty impressive. I shake a little bit, but it's all good. I can't remember the last time I did a plank. I mean, I ain't been to the gym. And... This is another problem. We need to do a whole podcast on this. Our lifestyle is yeah. so wonky and upside down. Going to the gym is actually sometimes it's actually impossible. Yeah. Sometimes I know it's a bit of a segue, but but when you after you finish a gig, you come home. Your ears are a bit ringy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and you're hungry. Starving. Starving. Always, because the reception food, you've eaten it at 7, but you get home at like 4 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what are you doing after a wedding reception? You get home at 2 o'clock and then, well, say 3 in the morning. Yeah. Argument's sake. What um, are you doing? If I haven't got like a cheeky kebab on the way home, which is usually what I like to do, um, but then you can't be doing that once a week. That's it. That's it. It's not good. I'll get home, um, I'll, I'll rummage around in the fridge and see if I can get like any any sort of like leftovers from what people had for dinner yesterday or something. If I've got none of that, it's going to have to be uh, some sort of delivery room, man. I have to. I have to eat something. I got no, I, You know what? I try and be healthy. I don't have any bad snacks. I've got no crisps in my house because yeah. like I'll just eat them otherwise. Yeah. Same with fizzy drinks. I don't have any. So like I'll just come home. If there's nothing that I've made or something, I have to deliver get something delivered in have to yeah. and that that's you're right your, your ears are ringing you've yeah. probably had red bull to get home then you eat you know after making something or, or delivering something getting something delivered and then you go to sleep on a full stomach after, I can't, having, after I can't, having a red bull you can't sleep yeah i can't sleep even yeah. after food like i've got to i've got to wind down and watch something or do something yeah so by the time you get to bed it's about four 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 thirty yeah and then people were like oh you got up at midnight to, at midday midday today i'm like yeah yeah, because they think you literally finish a gig and you get home and sleep. Do you know what? The biggest question, the most that. question, I swear I get this the most, yeah. So what do you do in the day? And I'm like, let's sleep. just, <laughs> let, another podcast. <laughs> let's just leave that one there. 
But we talked about a lot in this one, to be fair. We did um, head tables, top tables, who should be on there, who shouldn't, where to seat people. Um, yeah. we, we talked about your your actual wedding and your your entrance fiasco, which you're now doing. I'm doing an entrance. Was that more of a missus thing? Is she? Yeah. We won't tell her that, though. No. Yeah. I wanted an entrance. I love entrances. He loves entrances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then we went on to talk about microphones and speeches. Food. Yeah, man. Well, slightly about food but yeah and uh in this podcast we do actually speak about pretty much anything wedding related plus what we eat when we get home um but anything wedding related in the dj's eyes so if you miss any episodes make sure you go check them out they're on youtube apple spotify all that kind of stuff um you'll find them there and if you've been listening to us you can actually watch us like i said on youtube um but i think that's more or less it till the next one yeah peace